guys, what's up? It's Hope, and I'm here to bring you my week 64 post-op VSG update. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy surgery on July 1st, 2013, so it's been 64 weeks ago this week, um, and I am here to bring you another weekly update. I am sick, so I'm going to try and talk up so you can hear me. Um, my throat is just killing me, and um, it's just, I guess, that time of year where weather starts changing and my sinuses start getting all crazy. Um, I just have like a really super sore throat. Um, and so just haven't been feeling well. Um, I actually recorded this video on Monday and the video cut off cause I don't have a lot of storage on my phone. And so I figured, um, I would go ahead and just do another video and, um, record it on the iPad. So that's where we are. Um, I do have lots to update you on, so um, this video hopefully will be a longer video because it's been a while since I gave you all like a real deal update, so um, I've got lots of things to cover, and so I'll just get started. Um, I'm going to start off with the numbers. My highest weight ever recorded was 330 pounds. On the day of surgery, July 1st, 2013, I was 306. Last week, I came to you weighing 184. This week, I'm 186. So that is a two pound gain from last week. And yes, I'm freaking out about it. Um, but I feel like just being conscious about where I am in my journey and um, just making sure that I'm making really good choices uh, is a way to just kind of always be conscious of where I am, if that makes any sense at all. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm super stressed out about it. And honestly, I was the same weight all week. And then I, when I weighed on Monday, I was 186. So. I was like 184 all week and then uh, 186 on Monday, which is my weigh-in days. But um, we were out and about a lot during the weekend, and I definitely noticed myself like grazing and snacking a lot more, still making really good choices, but eating a lot more than normal during the, the regular day. Um, and so that probably has something to do with the gain on Monday when I, do, when I did my weigh-in. Um, I'm definitely noticing that I can eat a lot more during the day. Um, especially if I eat something, um, let's say for dinner, I fix a plate of food and I can't eat all of it, but if, and if I leave it, put it in the microwave or put it in the refrigerator for later and I come back an hour or two later and heat it up, I can definitely eat the rest of it. So if I give myself time for the food to kind of go down, um, I can definitely eat more of what I was eating. Um, uh, I'm trying to rein that in because I feel like that's real dangerous to get used to doing that. Um, you're just getting in a lot more food than uh, you normally would. And um, I don't know, that really kind of scares me that I can eat more than uh, usual. Um, but I think that has a lot to do with, you know, mindless eating and really trying to be conscious of what I'm eating and, um, you know, just trying to make sure that it's real hunger and not head hunger. Um I don't know, when you get this far out, it really becomes a matter of um, a mental thing. Like, you really have to have your mind game um, on point. Um, a lot of things. You get to the point in your journey where I am right now, and you really could potentially eat whatever you want. Um, and that, for me, is a scary thing. Y'all know that I'm super strict with what I eat, and... and have been from the very beginning um, and so when you get this far out and um, you start thinking about just how much you're eating during the day and f calories and protein and all of that um, I don't know something inside of me has been kind of rearing its ugly head saying well you could eat this and it's the same amount of calories or you can eat that and um, I haven't given in to that yet, but it's very scary um, when, I guess, I don't know if my willpower is breaking down. I don't know if it's because I haven't been feeling well. Um, I don't know. I'm an emotional eater, um, and so I don't know if it's all of the stress with the fertility stuff, and I've just been super stressed out about all of that. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know where this is coming from, but it's been hard to kind of rein it in and really kind of focus on, um, not giving into it and, and making really good choices and just continuing to, um, um, make sure that I'm, you know, continuing, 
um, to live this healthy lifestyle. So that's been a struggle for me. Um, I'm not perfect. I just, this journey has been a combination of, sorry, tons of ups and downs and, um, lots of setbacks and, and just, you know, successes and NSVs and amazing moments and life changing moments. And, um, everyone's journey is completely different. And, um, you know, what, you're going through out there isn't necessarily maybe what I'm going through on my particular journey, but, um, I'm grateful for, um, this forum that I have to be able to share my story and to have all of you out there supporting me and encouraging me along the way. And I'm just super, super grateful for, um, this community that I found of really amazing, incredible people who are so inspiring and who continue to like uplift me and really motivate me um, to stay on um, this journey and to really continue working towards, you know, being the very best me possible. So I'm super grateful for that. Um, so I'm kind of in a tough place right now um, mentally, really. I feel like I'm struggling not really with food as much um, because, like I said, I haven't given in to the temptation of, um, you know, eating whatever I want. Um, because I'm an all or nothing kind of person and I've said that in other videos. Um, you know, I feel like the moment that I fall to temptation, the moment I eat candy, the moment I slip back into those old heat eating habits that there'll be no stopping me, <laughs> which probably sounds really crazy, but, um, that's a fear. Um, I don't, I'm just not an in moderation kind of person. Um, never have been. So, um, I don't know. Kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and then now I'm sick and I don't feel good. So that's just wonderful. Um, so I'm, I'm also finding myself, I'm not as obsessed with the scale as much as I used to be, which is honestly really kind of freeing, um, I was on my, put on my first diet when I was seven years old and I have been on a diet ever since my whole life. I mean, it's always been about weight gain, weight loss, numbers, how much do you weigh, scales, diets, food, what are you eating, what are you not eating? Um, it's always been a conversation that's ongoing and it's so neat, so freeing. I'm so blessed and so grateful to be at a point in my life where I really am the healthiest I've ever been in my whole life. And to not be as obsessed with the scale is just so freeing. Um, I used to, I would literally weigh myself every single day. And I still weigh myself more than once a week. Um, now, Mondays are my weigh-in day, so that's the weight that counts. But um, I still am finding, I don't know, I'm finding where, like, I didn't weigh today. And I don't think I weighed yesterday. And that was completely unheard of for me. Um, even pre-op, I was weighing myself just every day, super conscious of how big I was. And so um, I'm grateful to be in a spot on my journey where I'm not as obsessed with the scale or with the numbers or even with the calories or just, I mean, I'm eating pretty much the same things that, that I used to as far as, you know, newly po uh, post-op goes. Um, I'm eating the same things that I always do. So Nothing like that has really changed, um, and so, I don't know, sorry, um, so I'm really super grateful to be in that position right now where I'm not as obsessed with it. Now, I am still obviously conscious, um, like I had a two pound gain this week, and so I'm really going to focus on reining in this whole going back to my plate thing, and um, just the snacking and grazing, and, um, you know, I'll most likely log my food this week. I talked about last week how I really use my fitness pal as an accountability tool, so I'm going to be using that this week to just kind of track my calories and make sure I'm getting my protein in, and, um, you know, I feel like those, um, those practices, those good habits that I got into, um, really lay a really good solid foundation um, when you get 
a year and a half out and you're needing to kind of rein yourself in, you have that foundation to look back to and say, okay, I know the fundamentals of what exactly I need to do here to make sure I'm successful. Um, let's do this. And so I'm grateful for that. Um, and so <clears throat> next up, I want to talk about fertility stuff. Um, my husband and I did meet with a fertility specialist uh, last Thursday. Um, he was super awesome, really friendly. Um, we met with him and went over our entire history. Um, now, as far as the abnormality goes with the test results of my husband's analysis, um, it did come back that he had a low count. And so our fertility specialist is really optimistic in that he'll be able just to give Andy some medicine to up his counts, um, which is a good thing. Um, and so we, um, went in, like I said, we went over our history and he listened and he was really optimistic about our chances of getting pregnant. He said, we just have to figure out a game plan. And so, um, that day I ended up having some blood work done. Andy had some blood work done. They took like 14 vials of blood. I'm not kidding. 14 vials of blood, which was insane crazy. Um, thankfully I had a really good nurse and whenever she took the blood, I didn't even feel the prick. So super, not that I'm like really weird about needles anyway, but sometimes when people like, like when you have an IV or you're getting blood drawn, sometimes it depends on who's doing it. It can really hurt really bad or it cannot. And thankfully when she did it, it wasn't that bad. Um, so took some blood work. He wanted to do an ultrasound, a vaginal ultrasound to look at my ovaries just to kind of make sure everything looks okay. Apparently there's a way for doctors to um, determine a woman has PCOS by looking at their ovaries and how the eggs are spaced out in the ovaries, which I thought was really interesting because I never knew that before. Um, he said, now I know you say you have PCOS, but I want to confirm it. So we want to make sure to have this vaginal ultrasound. So they will do that that day. Um, he did say, now I remember telling y'all last week that I started my period on that Sunday, which was completely random because I hadn't taken any medicine. Um, and he said, had I not started on that Sunday and typically my cycles are like five to six days. So it ended like Wednesday night, early Thursday morning and the appointment was on Thursday. So, um, had I not started that week and stopped that morning, we would have had to wait a whole nother month to have the blood work done and the ultrasound done, all of that. So I felt like that was so crazy how I like just started it completely out of random and I was able just to go ahead and have the blood work done and the test done that we needed to. So I felt like that was really cool. Um, and so um, the last thing he wants to do is a procedure where they go in and kind of look at everything and then they flush out my fallopian tubes to make sure there's no blockages. So that's going to happen on October the 20th. Um, it is a procedure where they have to put me under, so I'm super nervous about that. Um, Y'all know I have crazy anxiety about, like, hospitals and stuff. So hopefully it's not too bad. He said the procedure only takes, like, 30 minutes. So um, it's not too invasive or anything, and it's not like I'll have any, any incisions or anything to kind of take care of. Um, and so that'll happen on October 20th. And then after that, we'll really have a game plan um, to see what, what we'll do as far as Clomid or another kind of fertility medicine. We didn't really talk about exactly what he wants to do. So, uh, we're waiting to see, um, how all the, all the tests come back and how everything, um, pans out with all of that. He does want to do another analysis of, uh, for Andy. So that's going to be happening within the next couple of weeks. Um, I am still tracking my ovulation. I'm set to ovulate next weekend. So hopefully we're able to get pregnant without even having to uh, go down this whole fertility specialist taking another round of fertility medicine. Praying, 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 hoping that, you know, maybe it'll just happen. Um, he said that like, you know, and typically men have like 20,000 sperm, 20 million sperm and Andy's count was like 4 million or something like that. And he said, all you need is one. And so that was, I was like, yeah, all you need is one. So we were super optimistic about that. I'm probably going to have to cut this video off because I'm like at almost 15 minutes. Um, and I'll just record a part two. Yay, a part two. Um, I'll see you guys in a few.